Hey everybody, Fishman here. Welcome to another video. This was my Saturday morning. It was a nice, lovely snowfall. It was very picturesque. I mean, it's nowhere near record setting or anything, but it was, like I said, it was really pretty to look at. So I thought I'd share it with you, especially for uh, those of you who are uh, a lot further south than I am and don't get to see this. Um, or drive through it, I guess, is probably another way of looking at it. But anyway, I didn't have anywhere to go today, so it was just something uh, lovely to see. So this has been an interesting week in the fish room, but I thought I'd start off with this because this was an interesting turn of events. I had a pair of angelfish. That would be one of them right there in the front corner. And then they laid some eggs and they fungused and it didn't work out well. So I thought instead of uh, giving them a chance to have a couple more batches and see how those go, I pooled all the angelfish adults that I had and allowed them to repair. So they did that. And one of the original pair is now part of a new pair. And that little cloud of fry there is theirs. And it's actually a really cool number of them. Uh, I'm very happy to see that. Uh, pardon the cloudiness of the water, but I have put a lot of infusory in here to give the little guys a chance at uh, life. And... I mean, it's really nice. I don't want to leave them with the parents too long. I mean, they're obviously free swimming and they're doing a reasonable job. But I am going to put together a way of suspending it in this aquarium and feeding them and keeping them separate. And that's going to be coming up for uh, Wednesday's video, so I'll show you what I'm going to do for that. But anyway, I'm really happy with this. It was really cool. But one of the things I wanted to do because this happened is I wanted to double check all my cultures. So I got the microscope out, and these are, <clears throat> the first few clips anyway, are just a uh, like, tiny fraction of a drop of water, mid, like mid-tank, on those two tanks that used to be the Daphne cultures. And I wanted to see, make sure there's enough uh, infusoria in there that uh, they can easily feed those fry. And yeah, it's, it's perfectly fine. There's tons and tons of it in here. Uh, this is just like the first section I got to, but I did switch over to another one. Uh, this is the right-hand tank, and as you can see, like I said, this is a very, very tiny fraction of a drop, and you're only seeing a very tiny fraction of uh, that amount of water. So, I mean, this is actually a really nice dense population for, uh, well, for the purposes that I want it for. So, then I went and did the left-hand tank, and this is still the same magnification, uh, initially, I thought maybe it wasn't as good, but uh, once things settled in, uh, there's plenty of things uh, zooming around in here. And uh, like I said, this is ideal for uh, what I want for feeding the fry. So this is going to be probably the first week's worth of food is going to be, uh, this is going to be in the tank at all times. And then I'm going to uh, start adding vinegar eels. And then probably uh, somewhere around the week mark, I will start putting in a small amount of microworms. And we'll see how that goes as well. I keep meaning to set up some brine shrimp hatcheries and raise brine shrimp and all that sort of stuff. But as you can tell, I have lots of things on the go already. And I just haven't had time to do that. So uh, we will eventually get around to having as many varieties of live food, especially for fry, but also for the adults uh, as soon as I can get to it. But anyway, this is uh, teeming as well as you can see. I got to a nice section here. And while I was at it, I wanted to have a comparison. I wanted to see the size comparison between this and some of the things that uh, are in the water. I mean, there are lots of things. Uh, I am currently, obviously, culturing uh, shrimp and scuds. So what I did is I went, this is from the same culture here. I went and got a bit of the mulm from the bottom. And I fished around in it until I could find the smallest scud I could find. And this is it. <laughs> this is like tiny. This is pinhead sized. And this is um, the smallest one I could find. And you can see the comparison between that and uh, the infusoria. So that was kind of cool. And also what I was doing, I figured I'd show it uh, more of a mid-range sized one. And it's kind of cool to see how much structure there is in these things. There is an awful lot going on here, and it's probably a good thing that they're tiny because uh, those are an awful lot of bristles and spikes on those things. And the neat thing is, if you watch as we uh, pan up the back here, 
there's actually a rudimentary circulatory system there. You can see uh, water pumping in there and or whatever else is in there. And uh, it was just kind of neat to see. There you go. That's a good shot of it there. So I wanted to do that simply because, uh, like I said, I was getting ready for uh, separating those uh, some of the fry out. I don't like to take all the fry out. I like to leave some of the parents. Uh, but I wanted to have uh, at least a few of them to uh, grow up because I do actually need some angels. And I actually haven't really bred angels uh, before. I mean, I always had people who did it for me, so I never really had to worry about it. And uh, now it was, uh, well, it's time to actually get a little bit more independent when it comes to breeding things because of well, you know, all the stuff you've already heard so much about. So that is going to be uh, some upcoming stuff. And the other thing I wanted to do is I wanted to cover a little bit more of my last video, which was which filter type is best for removing ammonia from an aquarium. So I bought that bottle of ammonium chloride. I dosed it according to the label. And then I started taking uh, tests started at three minute increments because I thought that the aged filter I was using was going to be able to remove the ammonia at a fairly quick rate. Because like I said, it is an aged filter. It's been in the tank for a very long time and it should have a lot of uh, bacteria culture in it. And I thought it would take care of it quite quickly. And if you watch that video, you realize that I was really quite wrong. I had overestimated. I thought that the culture would uh, be sufficient to take care of it, but in all things, uh, these things only retain as much culture as required. And ammonia is pretty much a trace element in an established aquarium, so this is the thing I'm learning, which is really kind of cool. So the one on the left is going to stay at the two hour mark, and I'm going to gradually scroll uh, the one on the right through the hours as this progresses. And uh, We'll eventually get to the end of this. I mean, the filter is a good filter. I've, I mean, it's a box filter. I use them on my tanks. I've used them for a very long time. Uh, they do an amazing job. So I'm not concerned about them actually getting to the point where the ammonia is gone, because that will happen. My concern is the length of time this is taking. Uh, it really was a surprise. What I'm going to do, though, once this is done, once uh, the ammonia gets to zero, if I haven't run out of test solution, is I am going to uh, repeat this experiment. I'm not going to change anything. I'm not going to touch anything. I'm just going to redose that aquarium with ammonia, the same amount. And then I'm going to see how long it takes the second time to go through this whole process. Because I'm thinking that I am uh, gradually increasing the amount of culture that's on this filter. And that is another interesting aspect of this. <laughs> this experiment is leading to, especially from the comments I read, to a great many more experiments, and they will be coming up as well. Uh, but I want to flesh this out a little bit before I move on to underground filters, so I'm gonna do this once more, and I am gonna order more ammonia test kit, uh, just so I can continue with this. And like I said, this is very interesting, and I hope it's interesting for you as well. So here we are at the day mark, and going forward, I greatly increased the span between tests. Like I said, I'm trying to get this solution to last as long as possible. Uh, so I started taking them in the morning, uh, first thing when the lights came on, and then again uh, in the evening, like around about six, somewhere between six and eight o'clock, because eight o'clock is when the lights go off again. Uh, so anyway, this is at 41 hours, and as you can see, it is going down considerably. We are now well within uh, the upper band, and it is going to be fairly soon when this is going to be gone. Probably another day, I suspect. But, like I said, this took way longer than I thought. Uh, so we're looking at roughly about three days uh, for this filter to get rid of uh, two parts per million of ammonia. Well, again, I mean, it's not exposed to a whole lot of ammonia. And I'm actually really curious to see what's going to happen with uh, this experiment when I redose it to see if it has gained culture. And that's something I want to do for every filter type going forward. So there are going to be updates for this. Uh, it won't be right away because I do need to get more of this test kit in. Uh, and I'm going to do that on Monday. And I'm on, hopefully, well, hopefully I'll get it relatively soon. And I'm going to, like I said, I'm do this as much as possible, especially this one here because I want the this one to be a consecutive test. I think I have enough to go through this now that I know to test 
less frequently, and uh, we'll see how that goes as well. Also, I've got the protocol for filming this down a bit better now, so you're going to have a better view of it. So anyway, that's an ongoing experiment, and we're going to see how that all wraps out in <laughs> hopefully in relatively short order. So as always, uh, let's move on to the final clips, which are the three uh, tanks in the plant growth with the different substrates. And they're doing really well. There's really nothing new to say about this at this point. Uh, I've covered most of it already with you guys. Uh, I just want to have the continuous uh, recording of this. And we are now at mid-January. And uh, in the week, the last week of the month, I am going to do the three-month update. And I want to do this rather eh, com comprehensively. Let's just say it that way. I don't want to get too in-depth with chemistry and stuff, but I do want to uh, go over at least uh, well the visual aspect of it. At the six-month mark, I am going to actually take the plants uh, out of the aquarium. We're going to measure them, uh, check the leaf structure, uh, see which ones have better leaf structure. And not just for... Uh, the two main ones up front, which is the Val and the Red Luigia, but also for everything else as well. I want to see uh, how much of a difference there is. Now you can tell by what I've said so far which ones are which ones my favorite, uh, but that's all right. That doesn't really matter. And then there's another experiment I want to run after doing the uh, carbon tests on the other tank. I want to run on this one because I got an awful lot of comments and thank you very much about that uh, involving. Um, nutrients being removed from an established aquarium uh, by using carbon and having issues with the plants afterwards. And I want to run that on this tank here specifically because, well, I mean, it has so much organic uh, material in it. It's got nice tannins and obviously everything in the tank is thriving. So it would be the perfect example for uh, running that sort of thing. And we're going to see how that goes. So as always, if you like this style of video, please like and or subscribe and always leave comments because, uh, I mean, it leads to so many new things. I mean, uh, a bunch of comments uh, have spawned so many more ideas in my head for other experiments we can do for plant growth and uh, fish breeding and all sorts of stuff. So uh, definitely we can get through the rest of this silly COVID stuff and uh, keep ourselves or at least me occupied and hopefully uh, you guys entertained as well so uh, definitely let me know about all that and if you have any sort of suggestions uh, definitely leave them i obviously can't get to all of them because i'm having a hard time keeping up it as it is with the ones i need to do uh, but i'll do my best and i do uh, write down and keep track of things and obviously i'm going to forget i mean uh, there are uh, like i said too many things to keep track of and stuff stuff will get lost and uh you know shelved and never gotten to again but just remind me it's easy to enough to do so and uh, hopefully i'll get around to that as well so there you go these tanks are doing really well uh, i like them all and uh except maybe this one here this one's probably my least favorite and it has only to do with the invertebrates uh, the fish and everything else is doing quite well so anyway thanks again for watching i will see you in the next video and bye for now